The Thinking Machine. I'm convinced that machines can and will think in our lifetime. 大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王 There's been a lot of talk about AI recently, but what does it even mean? And is it going to take over the world and enslave us all? Not anytime soon, that's for sure. When I was growing up, there were several movies that explored the idea of artificial intelligence. One example is James Cameron's Terminator. In it, computers become sentient and go to war with us meaty humans. In those days, when people said AI, they were talking about computers that could actually think, machines with programming so advanced that they could evolve to have agency. As technology expanded. And several key inventions like the internet and object-oriented programming took center stage. People started to believe AI was just around the corner. But as the years went on, AI seemed further and harder to reach. As we investigated the details of how the human mind works, we found it was much more complicated than we originally suspected. And so, for a time, everyone seemed to give up on AI. In the last decade or so, AI has returned to the spotlight. Only now, its definitions seem to have changed. Now, when people say AI, they often mean computers mimicking thoughts, mimicking human behavior. That's not what AI actually means, at least in the largest sense. The definition I will be using is the original one: computers that can actually think, or can pretend to think so well that no one can tell the difference ever. So, is this happening anytime soon? No. I thought about AI from all the way back when I was still trying to get DOS games working. Lands of Lore, Leisure Suit Larry, and Sim City. But my favorite game of all is Master of Magic. It's an Overland game inspired by the Civilization series, but with the addition of wizards and spells. Released in 1994, I played this game endlessly. When my computer opponents made strange decisions or acted very unrealistically, I began thinking about how their thought processes worked and what could be done to improve them. At the time, I believed the mind was an object separate than the body. Which, long story short, could never be reproduced by computer technology. So the way I looked at the problem was rather than how could computer enemies think, how could they pretend to think? Rather than have emotions, how could they pretend to? I thought about human reactions from the point of view of probability. If I walk up to several people, offering each a dollar, I thought about the possible reactions. Some might be nervous of a scam. Some might be thankful. Others might simply grab the dollar and walk away. Some of these reactions would be more likely to happen due to the variables involved, but all in all, it appeared to be very similar to chances of a dice rolls. As long as I knew the various options available and the variables involved, I felt I could at least, in theory, recreate the real-world reactions. From there, I took the inverse viewpoint: what then would need to be done to calculate a human's responses to every situation possible? Well, I figured. It would be a very, very large game of chance, really. A large set of variables declaring the average moods, temperaments, and fluctuation ranges thereof. A very large set of variables constantly changing, as does the real world, and simulations for testing and enhancing. That's basically the core, a way to mimic reality. When people think about AI in this way, they usually protest with random chance. That's not really AI, and of course they're right. That's because I don't see any way to create true AI anytime soon. But why? Well, let's take a look at something Ray Kurzweil, a notable expert in the field, said in an interview back in 1989. That's pattern recognition, and that is actually the most difficult aspect of human intelligence. Pattern recognition is the most difficult aspect of human intelligence? Uh, no, it isn't. Not even close. If you're going for true AI, then the most difficult aspect is where do the thoughts come from? Pattern recognition is easy. That's why it's been mostly solved already. Libraries like OpenCV, which I've used myself to recognize visual patterns, and even earlier systems have been around for a while. So how could he say this? Well, he only could have been talking about AI in the sense of mimicking the human mind rather than recreating it. Then it makes more sense because if you're just going to mimic it, all you need to generate thoughts is a relatively simple thought generator function. So you see, there's a great deal of confusion with the term AI. Are we talking about actually creating a thinking, sentient being, or are we talking about creating the appearance of one? And the question is actually quite important because one is relatively straightforward to do, but not really real AI, and the other depends on us actually understanding ourselves, which we do not. 
in actually thinking AI computer would be a new life form of sorts. We would have obligations to ensure its survival and happiness. From a technical point of view, it would need to have the ability to rewrite its own code in response to internal and external influence. People can change themselves. But if we're looking only to mimic AI, we have no moral obligations as the entity would be entirely unable to think in any real way. It would just be a bunch of code. And the technical side of what it needs to do looks more like an orchestra of random number generations. I have seen little evidence that the programmers of today are anywhere near as empowered as they would need to be to go down the path of creating true AI. I find little to no evidence that we have made much progress in that area at all, really. It doesn't even seem most people think of this definition of AI anymore. Most people think of AI now as computers doing stuff like how humans do them. Yeah, yeah, but just get to the point. Are we all about to become slaves to the robots, yes or no? No. We may become enslaved to men using those robots, but the robots themselves will not want to enslave us. In fact, they won't want anything. We just aren't going down that path because the fact is we still don't understand almost anything about ourselves. And in order to fully recreate a human, the first thing we would need to do is understand him. In the meantime, we will continue working towards this sort of pretend AI, but that's nothing to fear. Yet. Well, those are my thoughts. What do you think? And if you're an artificially intelligent supercomputer, please comment and let me know. Thanks, everybody. See ya.